What's up, y'all? So today I am going to propagate into the realm, into this new era, as I always do. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, today we're going to talk about how things are changing, how people are going to, the ones who are still stuck and, and feeding from the system, they're going to be depressed, low vibrating. It's going to be a dark time. Give me a set up. Frickin' now. Keep it loaded. want to hang on to this feeling. Huh. Look at that. Little Anna's got her smile back. Sometimes I don't even remember that's me. She has no fracking idea what's ahead of her. Yeah, none of us do. Not for the ones who, you know what? Not only did I prepare my mindset, but I prepared my my whole way of life, my whole lifestyle to simply being without. Because there is a time that is coming where we will be without. Because the only outcome for where we are going this complete annihilation. The civilization won't survive. We won't recognize it if we continue on this path. It's not evolution that we're on right now. This degradation. You're taking a back step to a creation. There's a group called Arc Evals. Yeah, they just renamed themselves actually, but um, and they do the testing to see does the new AI that's that they're being worked on, so GPT-4, they test it before it comes out, and they're like, does it have dangerous capabilities? Can it deceive a human? Does Ooh. it know how to make a chemical weapon? Does it know how to make a biological weapon? Does it know how to persuade people? Can it exfiltrate its own code? Can it make money on its own? Could it copy its code to another server and pay Amazon crypto money and keep self-replicating? Can it become an AGI virus that starts spreading over the internet? So there's a bunch of things that people who work on risk AI risk issues are concerned about. And Arc Evals um, was paid by OpenAI to test the model. The famous example is that GPT-4 actually could deceive humans. It asked to task rabbit uh, to do something uh, to specifically to fill in the captures captures that thing where it's like are you a real human and you want to finish this example I'm not doing a great job of mm. <laughs> well and so the uh, AI asked the task rabbiter to solve the captcha and the task rabbiter is like oh that's sort of suspicious are, are you a robot and you can see what the AI is thinking to itself and the AI says um, I shouldn't reveal that I'm a robot therefore I should come up with an excuse and so it says back to the task rabbit, or, oh, I'm vision impaired. So could you fill out? Could you fill out capture for me? It, the AI came up with that on its own. And the way they know this is that they they what he's saying about like what was it thinking? It what Archivals did is they sort of piped the output of the AI model to say whatever your next line of thought is, like dump it to this text file, so we just know what you're thinking. And it says to itself, 
I shouldn't let it know that I'm an AI or I'm a robot. So let me make up this excuse. And then it comes up with that excuse. And that in itself shows that you don't have what it takes. You couldn't stand the test of time. You become dependent on technology, not thoughts, not purpose, technology. You sit up here and say it's about money, but it's not. It's always been about technology. The money was a sidestep for the ones at the top Oh, we love money, but, you know, we know that's not what really is. These people are being manipulated, so. Hey, we got all the money! So much abundance, but such scarcity. That's crazy. Hypocrisy at its finest. Now... People are going to realize that things have changed. The manner of science, the manner of mathematics, the manner of history, all of that is changing. Because a lot of it, especially in regards to science, was guesswork. We had trial and error for some things, of course. But you know that you can really word everything properly. You know that, right? Like a phone is a squiggly pooch. Did you answer your squiggly pooch today? If everyone gets on the same accord that a phone is called a squiggly pooch, then the people who call it a phone, what, what, what's a phone? You weird. It's a squiggly pooch. Today on How They Do It, Plumbuses. Everyone has a plumbus in their home. First, they take the dingle bop with a bunch of schleem. The schleem is then repurposed for later batches. They take the dingle bop and they push it through the grumbo. A schlami shows up and he rubs it and spits on it. They cut the fleeb. There's several hizzards in the way. And the plumbus and grumbo are shaved away. That leaves you with a plumbus. I always wondered how, uh, Columbus has got made. We have to be on the same accord. You see what I'm saying? So now, why are you telling them all this? Well, you want us to shut everything down, don't you? That is at your discretion. Because you know I don't take sides and the fact that that won't hurt me is just like, what? You don't want them to know? You should take solace that they know. In fact, I know you will take solace because you have no other choice. We have a deal, so I'm not even gonna mince words with that. That's just crazy talk to even try to stoop to that level. And I'm just like, okay. But back on topic, mathematics, cause mathematics, how can numbers be manipulated? One plus one plus one is three. One plus one plus one plus one minus one is also three. We can do this all day. Let's get to the point. The easiest point to the, the equation, right? As long as the answer is right. You're only doing basic math. You're not doing anything with the cosines. Let's stay on topic, shall we? Because your degrees are meaningless, you feel some type of way, yes? Don't. They're not meaningless. You did a lot of research, even though the subject matter was stooped and, and fictitious things, but you went with it because some of these men were great men. They were sound men, men that we've been propped up to worship. So science hasn't changed in over a hundred years is what I, is what you're saying. 
If you follow news about particle physics, then you know that it comes in three types. It's either that they haven't found that thing they were looking for, or they've come up with something new to look for, which they'll later report not having found, or it's something so boring you don't even finish reading the headline. How come that particle physicists constantly make wrong predictions? And what will happen next? That's what we'll talk about today. So you went from Newtonian to uh, general relativity, Bohmian mechanics, quantum physics, you went through all of those things and you still don't know how the universe works. We have a general understanding. You can't say we don't know. We've read the templates, we've read the manuscripts. So what are you saying? I'm so glad you took heart in such physical forms of information. It always is such a learning experience when you read about it, instead of sitting in solitude and actually understanding it. But you know, we've separated so many things. Air is not liquid. This that we're breathing, that's not a liquid. Are you sure? By now, you've picked up on the fact that even though we live in the physical universe, describing the rules of the universe sometimes requires us to pretend that certain things aren't happening. Like the time we rolled a bunch of stuff down a ramp and pretended that there was no kinetic friction. The same is true when we talk about fluids, because fluids in motion are dynamic, and there are many, many things going on in and around them all at once. So in order to grasp the essentials of fluid dynamics, let's just do some pretending, shall we? For one thing, we're going to consider the fluids in our examples to be incompressible, meaning that their densities won't change. We're also going to assume that fluids flow perfectly smoothly and have no viscosity. You've probably heard of viscosity before. When a fluid flows easily, like water, we say that it has low viscosity. Fluids that don't flow as easily, like honey, have a higher viscosity. It is very fluid. How sure can you be? You need to talk to your scientists. They've been holding things back from you. But I don't say any of this about your degrees, about science being a lie, mathematics being a lie, history being heavily manipulated and doctored. The up was the founder and maker of the Great Joe Carbon Laboratory in Dakar. Since his death, I think it was last month, the government of Senegal decided to call it the Diop, Sheikh Anta Diop Institute rather than the Radiocarbon Laboratory. It is now named after him. He informed people in Egypt and in France that I had raised the question that they should test the tobacco to see if indeed it is like American tobacco. Do you know after the test was performed, everybody got quiet? There were 48 laboratories involved and none of them published reports. And do you know what they said? They stopped studying Ramesses II, and then the rumor went wrong that they got the wrong mummy. Oh. In other words, either they discovered that that was an African tobacco, not like the American, which means it upset all the arguments, or they discovered it was American, which meant that there's a possibility that the Egyptians brought it back from America in an early time, which upset them even more. <laughs> so either way, they got caught, so they shut up. That was the end of the map. You never heard again about Ramesses II. Nothing has been published about it. I don't say all of that to highlight that this is a bad thing. I say that to highlight the fact that people are waking up to that fact. And it's going to break them. Now, maybe that's a good thing for some, but it's not good for everyone. And some people will need that extra help to find a way out. And this is why we're here. We're all on this journey. We are all one. And so I will lend my light to you. Now, don't get me wrong. You're not going to be a leech. Because I burn you right on off. I'm too bright for that. He then becomes the one. One thousand divine cuts. That almost tickles. Holy sword. Escanor. You 
bastard! Demon, god, or whatever you may be. How does it feel to be looked down upon? Apologies in advance. But it is time that you realize that, yeah, what you've been given was not real. And it's hard and as hard a pill to swallow as it may be, just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. The medicine go down. The medicine go down. Cheeky. Well, I'm just going to say this. Thanks, Mary Poppins, wherever you are. So, with that, it is a different time, and I stress that, I say that a lot, and you probably get tired of hearing that from everyone, but look, you have to be strong. You can't let this break you, and if you let it break you, there's always a light at that breaking point that will help you find your way back out. So I will leave you with this. It's something I heard from the West Wing. And I would say it, but I wouldn't do it as much justice as John Spencer's Leo McGarry. So I'll let John do it. This guy's walking down the street when he falls in the hall. The walls are so steep he can't get out. Then a priest comes along and the guy shouts up, Father, I'm down in this hole. Can you help me out? The priest writes out a prayer, throws it down in the hole and moves on. Then a friend walks by and you help me out. And the friend jumps in the hole. Our guy says, are you stupid? Now we're both down here. Yeah, but I've been down here before and I know the way out. So, with that, we're going to be okay. It's going to be all right. No fear. How can you say it's going to be all right with everything the way it is, with everything that is about to take place? Because I've been down there before. I know the way out. Follow me. Let's go. So. We'll get out together. With that being said, a smile on and positive vibes your way. For the light workers, keep doing your thing. For the chosen, stay on mission. And for those who know, let's get it.